Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic at Trade Group, and this is your end of day as well as end of week market recap for Friday, February 23rd. We have one more week to go left in February. Are we going to get some volatility or is it going to be uh, more of the same or does it pen depend on the stock? Um, we will try to, um, uh, I will try to go through some of those concepts with you uh, rather quickly in today's market recap. Risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. So let's get right to the week's performance first, and then we can kind of drill down to some of those um, uh, to some of those concepts that I just mentioned. So for the week, looks like I've got a, I always have errors in this and I've, I've got two right in here. So I'm going to fix them for you. Um, one of which is, and then I'll just move this over to here. All right, there we go. It's typos. Um, this, and this should be in red. Let's move this into red. There we go. All right. So s p what i wanted to say here and let me zoom this in for you maybe i was doing that on purpose so that you so that you couldn't see it but um nice week for the s p up 1.7 percent um the dow also finished up 1.3 percent um a little bit of a roller coaster week in terms of um you know a little bit of weakness in the beginning of the week a really strong day yesterday which kind of uh righted this the the ship look at this i've got another error in here too um just the colors are left over from last week. Um, Qs ended up 1.4%, you know, a little bit of weakness. Remember the Qs were down last week. So uh, they came back strong, you know, had a big day yesterday, right? Um, you know, just funny. I, I think I always kind of talk about some of the funny things that I hear in market commentary, but, you know, huge week, huge day yesterday for the Qs and um, and for the market in general. But what I heard was, um, you know, complaining, right? Oh, geez, when this happens, when the queues are up this much, or when there's only this many components, right? Uh, there's never, um, it seems, <laughs> it seems like there's always um, people that will come out and, you know, talk about how, well, this is negative, or that's negative, right? There's never a such, it never seems like there's a situation where people are content, right? They're always willing to kind of pick apart, um, you know, something to, to say that it's, that it's bad, it's negative. I don't see it that way. I, I think it was a very strong, uh, you know, resulting uh, end of the week. Today was kind of calm, um, but that's somewhat expected considering uh, the moves that we saw yesterday. Um, international areas were also up 1.4%, uh, or excuse me, EEM was at 1.3, EFA was at 1.8%. Um, Japan made a new high and are returning back to years past of testing, uh, testing those previous highs. Um, European stocks have been strong too. Bonds actually had an up week today. TLT kind of, you know, again, funny just today, TLT was up 1.3% and kind of saved the week and, and made uh, bonds positive for, for the week. Gold was up 1.2%. Um, the dollar was down uh, two tenths of a percentage point. You know, that's another thing that I've been hearing, right? Is, oh my God, the dollar is getting stronger. I don't see it that way either. Um, we really haven't had, you know, again, like I urge um, clients, investors, um, to traders to look at the bigger picture, right? For example, I've been doing this little trick from time to time, right? Here's here's where we were, right? Here's the dollar. Look at the left of your screen, right? This was all the way back in October. Notice the dollar hasn't really gone anywhere, right? You know, yes, it's gone. There's been some valleys and so forth, but um, you know, especially you know, it looked like we were going to break the highs about a week and a half ago. We didn't do that. Now the trend is still intact. You know, we're still above the 200 and the 50 and testing the 20-day moving average. But this is not blasting off to new highs. And from my standpoint, um, if the dollar was moving was uh, ripping to to new highs, then we would have something to worry about, but it's not ripping to new highs. Um, it is not through last year's highs. All right. Same thing. Um, I thought this was very interesting. We'll just talk about bond. We'll get the macro out of the way first. Um, that's the way I like to do it. All right. And here's TLT. Look at where TLT, what TLT did this week. It held on. Um, so again, no, no breakdown. And I'm not saying that that's a big margin that TLT held in there by, but um, it is holding. And um, now it's, uh, it's just below the, the moving average here in the 
50 day moving average. So I wouldn't um, say victory in terms of, you know, what TLT is doing, but for now it's not breaking and uh, breaking down and that level is 92.68, but it's, it's close, right. Um, you know, on that, uh, you know, looking at this and if we want, again, if you want to just look at the weekly, right, you could see how close it is. So again, I would not raise the, the uh, say, you know, victory and, or mission accomplished or anything like that. It is hanging on is the way that I would phrase it right now. All right. So that's um, one development I thought was interesting for the week. Both uh, value and growth did okay. Remember, value actually outperformed a little bit last week. All right. Bitcoin uh, was down 1.6% for the week. Sectors, you know, obviously this is interesting and notable, right? When we look at what, um, you know, semis outperformed for the week, but it was basically all in one day. Right. Um, here's the SMH ETF up 6.8% yesterday. Um, and literally, you know, don't forget Monday we had off, uh, it was holiday. So it was only a four day week, even though it felt like a full week. But every other day was negative uh, for the semis. So, yes, there was one stock that uh, that drove that. Right. And um, very strong yesterday's performance. And, you know, it's kind of fun. When, there's there's always little things that remind me about trading. Right. If uh, one of the things is. Um, you know, from time to time, I get traders that ask me or they say, hey, you know, Christian, I, I want to make the same amount of money every day. Like, hey, can I just make this amount every day? It doesn't work that way. Right. Um, some, you know, money comes in bunches sometimes, just like on a Thursday, uh, SMH was up 6.8 percent. Right. You can't even that out and say, OK, well, I, I, I only want a little bit every day. Right. Trading doesn't work that way. Sometimes there's no oper there's not good opportunities for a couple of days. Sometimes it's a couple of weeks. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, the market will pick up. You know, it reminds me of what the market did, you know, uh, in the middle to the in the I'll say the fall of last year. Right. August, September, October. Right. Those were really, you know, not easy months to trade, to navigate. Um, but if you got through that, then then you got a really big run, uh, you know, in November and December. So that's how the market works. It streaks like that, you know, and we're st we're still streaking, you know, even though, um, <clears throat> you know, we're I don't want to say we're long in the tooth, but we certainly had a pretty, um, you know, hell of a run so far. All right, so um, there's the performance of the sectors. Also, you know, a couple other areas. You know, it was some different other. It was some different areas. XLB. This uh, materials was something that came alive a little bit last week, right? Nobody really looks at the materials. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say it like that. It's just not a popular area, right? Um, but there are other areas that are performing well. And um, you know, it, again, I always I go back to because I you know I listen to I have you know either. Bloomberg or I do have CNBC up parts of the day. I don't listen to them all day long, but I listen to the commentators say the same thing all day long, you know, about the Magnificent Seven and so forth. And they don't give any attention to anything else. It's very rare, you know, unless there's a headline, but um, there's a lot of better performance out there than the Magnificent Seven names, right? And um, uh, Helen Helene Meisler was mentioning today, um, you know, she, she mentioned that there's three of them that are down. I, I think it's three. If I um, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But I think that there's three that are down year to date, right? Where where the S&P is up how much uh, year to date? Uh, I have it right here, so I'll show you. But the S&P is up almost 7%, right? So remember all that talk about it's only seven stocks. It's complete It's complete BS. I was going to say, I was going to use the real expression, but I held off. But um it, that's that's really horrible analysis because the S&P is up 7% and you've got three of the Magnificent Seven names that are down um, year to date. All right. Qs are up about the same at this point. Um, small caps are still negative on the year. Um, you've got a couple other things. Look at the difference between the ARK ETF and the IBD50 at this point. Uh, one's down 7%. Right? Is that right? I, I got to check. Some, sometimes I, I just, you know, if I've got a formula wrong in here, but... Um, Let's see if I can figure that out really quick. Uh, I think if I go to the performance here, year to date, um, there it is, down 7.4%. And FFTY um, is up nine points. Yeah, I mean, so that's right. Um, maybe the the the, the uh, might be something off there in the formula that it's not perfect compared to, oh, I, may, I think Bloomberg is off. They don't calculate today. But um, so there you have it. And uh, if you go through, I'll go through more of this in a week from now. Uh, I'll go through a monthly review. Uh, but um, just interesting to see where we are at this point, because we're almost two months 
uh, through the year. Let me see, do, did I want to go over the any other performance? Um, <clears throat> the home builders did okay this week. Biotech, which is a, a, a sector that I've been hi highlighting for a while, um, that was up 1.6% too, as well as healthcare was up 1.9%. Industrials, uh, I've been talking about them just continuously for the last uh, couple months, up 1.2%. And um, on the downside, uh, you know, clean energy and solar. So again, not every area of the market is doing well. There's no doubt about it, right? There, there are some areas, some areas in the market that are struggling, right? And clean energy and solar are, um, you know, those areas, as well as a few things like, you know, regional banks, which continue to underperform down again. All right. And um, on the plus side, oh, I've got this backwards, <laughs> but Epic's high was a lot of errors in this one. But uh, like I said, um, you know, uh, a long week, even though it was a short week, uh, Epic's high was up 6%. And uh, the China uh, Shanghai ETF um uh, ASHR was up 3.8%. I'll leave it there with, with this uh, performance like that. Um, a couple other things that I just wanted to mention too, you know, uh, that again, I've been kind of highlighting is that, um, let's see, what do I want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I think that this is really an interesting market because you could kind of say, depending if you're bullish or bearish, right, you could talk about one index and you could be spot on about being bullish, right? Here's the S&P, right? This is a note. This is our morning note. Um, you can go to uh, ttgtrading.substack.com www.tdtrading.substack.com. It's right here. And um, <clears throat> make sure you're signed up for that. Half of the post is free for you. So you don't have to pay anything. If you want to see positions in our watch list and actionable trade ideas, then of course you do have to subscribe to that, but it's cheap. But look at what the S&P is doing, breaking out to new highs. Is there any divergences here or is there a divergence with breath? Absolutely not. Right. There are plenty of new highs um, that are happening here and there are very little new ho new lows. Right. So th there's nothing like and again, I get it. The hardest thing to do for people is to ride the trend and sit and not do too much. Right. Um, people who are fighting the trend, they're going to have a tough time. Right. Now, the trend may eventually change. We might get a dip, another dip correction. But for now, um, it is what it is. Right. And, um, you know, I continue to watch things like the five day moving average, you know, because um, right now, let's just flip back to this really quickly. Let me go to just a, a spy chart. All right. Here's a weekly chart. There's no sell signal here. Sorry. There's just not. Um, and that's the weekly chart, right? You know, you can make a case. Maybe we're getting a little bit extended, right? We've got weaker seasonality, especially next week, but there's just no sell signal, right? And we're above, you know, we came in, we tested the 20 day moving average and we had one hell, hell of a kick off that 20 day moving average, right? So there's where we are. Yes, we are a little bit, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, testing the 20 day moving average, two days later, we're a little bit extended. Isn't it funny how that happens? All right, so that's what we have for, for the S&P, right? And um, so, and, and so again, you know, here's, so this looks strong. Now, it's not all the same, right? So for example, right, one of the questions that I have is what are the cues doing, all right? So let's look at the cues, right? Here's where we are. Um, you know, it, we did make a new high today. I don't know if that's a closing high, um, it doesn't mention on my chart, but we're also above all those short-term moving averages. So you could complain about it. You could try to come up with something negative, right? Maybe the, there's a little bit of an RSI bearish divergence, but overall, there's not a lot to really dislike here. Now, third one, IWM. Okay, you can you could change your argument a little bit here, right? So uh, let's make sure I've got the right thing up here. All right, here we go. So here's IWM. And so this is now we're using there's I don't have IWM uh, new highs versus new lows, but I do have NASDAQ new highs versus new lows. Right. Uh, and I apologize if this chart's not labeled that way, but I should have it in here. But yes, the, it's going side. It's pretty sideways. Right. Now, we know that we've that IWM has been catching uh, at support at the 50 day moving average and is also um, just above the value area for the month. But it's pretty darn sideways. And look at the battle that's going on. New highs versus new lows 52 weeks right there's there's a decent amount of new lows and there's a decent amount of uh, i don't know if i would say 
decent amount of new highs, but there are new highs there too. And look at the chart, it's sideways, right? So of course, do, do we have to trade IWM? No, you don't you don't have to trade something that's not giving you a good signal, right? That's the choice that you have, right? Uh, and I know that's sometimes contrary to some to how some traders think. Some traders always like to gravitate towards the hardest thing, right? Because they think that they can figure it out, right? Well, that's if you want to do that, do a, a ten thousand piece puzzle, right? But don't put your money in something that's very hard to figure out, right? We want easy trades. We want the easiest path, easy, easiest path to making money bottom line we don't want to deal with something that's difficult right and i and i think that you learn that over time right so um so there you go um but i think uh, i'm not going to go into in individual names in this uh, i'll save that for members over the weekend you know our watch list did pretty well um you know here's another thing too that i've been advocating is just how many new four week it, this so that was the 52 week highs versus lows here's four week new highs versus lows right there's not a lot to dislike when you look at what's going on in large caps okay um and then finally um our watch list and how how this did um i think pretty well right considering some of the positions that, that i've been taking too which are not on here by the way right members get to see that um as well as substack uh uh, members as well, but um, you know this is the watch list, and I did take a Wells. I took Wells Fargo on this one, right, uh, which was actually the best performer um, on this from from the trigger. But um, you know, plenty of green on the screen, um, even though I, I really kind of started the week uh, with a with a list that was a bit more defensive. All right, guys, that's it for the um, for the weekend video. Have a great weekend, and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, you'll be a Tribeca, mem Tribeca Trade Group member. Um, if you are not, um, go to www.tribecatradegroup.com and you can sign up and you can check us out. All right, guys, have a great weekend.